Okay. Let's bring that music down. Wow, I didn't even think today is the big two zero zero. Welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski, and today we are going to be making a painting about or of the greatest soccer player to ever live. Not Ronaldo, not Messi, not Pele, not many of the other names that may come to mind because it's not even a man, it's a woman. She happens to be Canadian. Her name is Christine Sinclair. And she is the most successful soccer player, or football player, if you're anywhere else outside of North America, football player in history. And she has more goals than any player who's played internationally, and has appeared in more games for their country internationally than any person, man or woman. So this is really exciting. I, I, I'm I'm super. I'm, I'm very, as a Canadian, very proud to be featuring this artist or this. Well, she is an artist. She's an artist with the ball, um, and she can do amazing things. Um, obviously, I can't show you any of her highlights here, or this video will get taken down. But it's pretty easy. You just type in Christine Sinclair into the web, and you will find infinite amount of things to check out so um let's see let's look at the picture we're about to do i was just changing a diaper two minutes ago so i'm a little bit like whoa what what's going on where are we what, what's what are we doing um okay here we go uh there we go so this is the image of christine sinclair about to shoot a ball now this image um, is n not actually at the Olympics. I did Photoshop in some of the Olympic rings in behind here uh, because we are today is the opening, earlier today was the opening ceremonies for the 2020 Olympic Games. And I saw in the chat there, Paula says, shouldn't it be the 2021 Olympic Games? Yes. <laughs> It, this is 2021 right now, but uh, the 2020 games, which were supposed to take place last year, which were canceled because of the pandemic, were moved to this year, and they decided to keep the name 2020. So it is one of those weird um, uh, anomalies. It, this, will, this is a trivia question for people 20 years from now, is what was the Olympics... What... what what were they called? What were the Summer Olympics that took place in whatever July and August of 2021 called? The 2020 Olympics, the 2021 Olympics, the pandemic Olympics, you know, I don't know what the, but it, it is an interesting little tidbit of history. Anyway, this is the image we're going to create. Here's the outline that I did um, of that image. And we're going to transfer this onto a canvas and I'm going to show you how to do it here. So there is a link in the description below to a bunch of different folders. And you'll see in here, these are all paintings that we've already done. And the idea behind these paint the news classes is we're painting people and animals and landscapes, uh, flags that are in the news, things that uh, are relevant to right now. Um, but also with an eye on creating images that uh, might have a, a longer lasting um, shelf life than maybe your regular newspaper, right? So today we're going to focus on this uh, great athlete who's also competing in the Olympics. In fact, what's interesting is, you know, sometimes they have Olympic events that happen the day before the, um, the Olympics actually begin. In this case, this is a headline from just the other day. Christine Sinclair scored another goal 
uh, in one of the the first events to, to to open the Olympics against Japan. So that was her 300th appearance with her team, her 187th goal. So she's you know you know about what. Uh, just under a goal a game is where she's scoring. Like what's that's like seventy five percent of the games she plays, she scores a goal, which is really really good. <laughs> um, anyway, so as I was saying, to get this outline, you go to the Dropbox folder, you click in here, and you'll see three files. One is the original image, and then here we have a JPEG and a PDF of this outline. And you can print it out onto regular paper. And here's all the other ones for upcoming videos, including an episode on Sunday. We're going to paint a special pride themed painting featuring Attila Richard Lukacs, a, a very famous Vancouver artist. And then all of next week, we're focusing on Vincent van Gogh. And so here's the image. We're going to we print it out and we're going to transfer it onto canvas in just a second here. Uh, I also let you know before we just launch right into this is that there is a private Facebook group just for people watching. I encourage you to join it. Upload your version of today's painting there and you can get feedback from artists that are already a part of this really incredible supportive group. It's an amazing thing. It grew out organically from our sessions. You'll see there's lots of links on top there that I want to get to throughout the episode, but let's just dive right in here. So the very first thing I do when I've got one of these canvases is, um, and some is what I do is this is a nine by twelve size canvas, and I I I've actually just ordered another forty of them off of Amazon just uh, last night because I like these, they're a little bit, I think, better than the ones you get at the dollar store. And then I put some gesso on it. In fact, I was gessoing more canvases today, so I'm like a gesso star these days. So I take, even though I, they already come pre-gessoed with this white, gesso is just white paint, or technically it's not white paint, but for our purposes it is. So this, um, what I do is I gesso it and then I sand it with some usually 220 grit sandpaper. Um, so today I used a uh, 100 grit sandpaper because I really want this surface to be nice and smooth. But do you see what happened? I pressed a little bit too hard and I ended up rubbing right through the fabric right down to the um, the board that's underneath there even did it on the bottom down there as well so not a that's probably that's not something you should do but it can happen so let's just wipe up all of this powder that came off the canvas so that I don't inhale it which is probably very unhealthy <laughs> And then let's put this image onto the canvas. So today there is a horizon line here, right? There's a, a line that's going left and right through the middle of the page, which is the edge of the field. And then we have the stands in behind here. So we, I think it's, it's, a pretty good idea today to try to get this image um, as straight as possible. The other thing I'm going to say is I'm going to move this image up a little bit so that the soccer ball is not right at the bottom, but a little bit higher. So I want this image to be, I'll go even higher somewhere. If that's the top of my canvas there, that would be good. So, I got a pencil, and let's just take a look at this, that line, 
17 mm or centimeters. So this side, it's got to go down ever so slightly. Now I could just ignore those lines and paint them in later on and just literally draw a line there on my own. But uh, I always find it, if I can just solve this problem right at the beginning of the painting, then I don't have to think about it later on. Because sometimes when I get into the painting, I forget about all this stuff, and then it's not until I'm sitting there on the couch at the end of after these episodes air and thinking like, wow, this turned out really great. And then, oh, look how crooked that background is. Now it drives me nuts. Okay. Another little thing. I just, I'm just always kind of curious. Let's see. That thumb is about two, just over two centimeters there. Okay, two and a half. Ideally, this would be, should be right in the middle. If anything, a little bit more this towards the right. But, ah, let's just begin this. We're enough, enough fiddle diddle and fiddle diddling. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know what, what that is, but uh, let's, we're going to not do it so anymore. Let's get right into this. We'll draw these lines. Um, you know, this, the outline that I did, I think I did this yesterday, is not the best outline that I've ever done. It doesn't really even look a lot like her, but that's not really the point of your outline. Your outline isn't really where you're trying to capture the likeness so much. Your outline should be really where you're, you're mostly just focused on the composition, getting things in the right place. And then afterwards, when you're painting it, is when you spend more time trying to kind of get a little bit closer to what the, the person in this case looks like. But I often see people really overthinking this part of the painting process, which is why I started doing these outlines, is I was just like, okay, let's just get that whole aspect out of the way as quickly as possible so that we can focus on the painting. Because this is, after all, intended to be a painting class, right? Or for some people, it might be just a, a fun kind of hangout paint. You know, if you're a little bit more experienced painter, this could be just kind of a fun little diversion to kind of keep you uh, and your skills fresh. Because Quite frankly, if you can execute any of the paintings that we're doing, like you're you're ahead of the game. You're you're definitely uh, like because I try to provide as many different uh, types of art and different ways of applying paint as possible to help people find their own style and preference when it comes to painting and because most people when they begin painting don't really know what it is that they want to do and they might have an idea they're like oh yeah you know I want to paint things that look like things but that can mean very different things All right um, it's like saying oh I, you know I want to I want to cook Italian food. Well, you tell that to an Italian, and then I go like, okay, well, Ita Italy's a pretty diverse country. What does that mean? Because there's some Italians who love their pasta, and there's some Italians who don't like pasta at all. Right? Famously, the the Futurists, which was a future, which was a, a Italian art movement. Um, that roughly coincided with the um, the Cubist art movement. It was the, kind of like the Italian version of the avant-garde. In their manifesto, written by Marinetti, they 
they said that the a, a true modern Italian should not eat pasta and bread because it makes them slow and stupid. <laughs> they also said they should you should they should burn down all the museums, destroy all the Michelangelos, and that Italy was too reliant on uh, its its history and should move forward. So. <laughs> Um, take take that uh, for what you want, but it is interesting to hear, you know, that there's many different opinions about pretty much everything. Okay, those are some sloppy rings, Michael. But we'll be, as we get into here, painting all of this much more carefully. If you, we don't even have to paint these Olympic rings if you don't actually want to paint them. And I almost, you know, I. Good, you see, the good thing about doing this is you can also ch just do, before you pull that green tape off, or whatever color tape you're using, take an extra second to make sure you've got everything on here. I almost pulled this off and then like, oh, uh, you know, it might help if we do the soccer ball. That's kind of an important part of this painting, I think. Okay, so I didn't do all the lines, but I think I got the most important lines. And when it comes out like this, you're like, wow, it's pretty simple. I don't see a lot of the detail in the face, and there wasn't a lot even in my um, outline. So, we tear this off. Okay. So, I asked in the chat there... Has anyone ever been to an Olympic Games before? Has anyone been to an opening ceremonies or been to a sporting event? Um, have the Olympics been held in your in your country or um, in your town? Because I got some stories to tell you as we go into the painting. Maybe before I launch into my stories and even talk more about Christine Sinclair. Let's begin the foundational part of this painting. So, if you've been joining me for months and months and months, you probably know what we're about to do next. We're going to put some warm yellow onto this painting. And I don't, I honestly, I don't know if there's anyone else who uses a warm yellow like I do. It's something that I have ultimately ended up reducing my process down, at least when I'm teaching painting, to the warm yellow. Because it's sort of the easiest way for us to just get started. We don't have to overthink too much. Traditionally, artists would put a brown down or a, or a really um, muted, or not muted, just a really earthy red. And... We, we did that for a number of episodes until I, I was just like, you know what? I think we're, especially for a beginner, intermediate kind of thing, we're overthinking this a little bit too much. I do still think putting some color down is better than nothing. A lot of other artists just start painting directly onto the white. I think that's just a, a big mistake, personally. You know, and, there, and there's many reasons. Every episode, I, I'd say all this stuff over and over again. So I apologize to the people who've heard all of this rambling over and over. But the vast majority of people who are watching have never seen me before, never tuned in before. So all of this is new to them. So I try to to be as accommodating as possible for for uh, all these new viewers. You know, there's. Every week there's about a new couple hundred new people join, uh, subscribe to my channel. So all these are all brand new people. And I don't want it to feel like this is a, a private club that uh, only people who were with me from the beginning um, can follow. Because one of my big... Um, goals in life as an artist is to simplify and democratize art for 
for everyone so that everyone can can experience the joy of making a painting I think a lot of people think this is it's really really complicated and, and um, beyond like unless you start young there's no way to get into it which is totally not true at all in fact in a, uh, at the beginning of September we're gonna do a painting um, inspired well we're gonna look at grandma Moses excuse me grandma Moses is very famous for not beginning art until the very end of her life her long life um, into her 80s so there's it's never too late to get into making art hmm great question Maria um, okay let me see I'll let this dry and then I'll, I'll answer a few questions and uh, Okay. So maybe before I answer your question, Maria, I just want to talk briefly about who this wonderful athlete is and why I've selected her of all the potential Olympians to celebrate the opening of the Olympic Games. As I said, uh, Christine Sinclair is the most successful soccer player in history. And if we look at her biography, you know, she's still relatively young, right? She's 38 years old, which, you know, for an athlete can be a little bit on the older side of things. But she's been playing uh, as part of the Canadian Olympic team for 20 years now. So she began at age 18 as a Canadian uh, athlete. I'm not sure when her first Olympics were, but as a uh, playing for the international for the Canadian women's national team since the age 18. Um, she's born right here in the Vancouver area, Burnaby, which is like a, uh, I guess you could, you could call it a suburb of Vancouver, although I'm sure people in Burnaby would cringe at that because I'm sure they like to think of themselves as a distinct city. It is a, a separate city with its own, um, city hall, etc. but, uh, it's, you know, if you're driving around Vancouver, you you would never know you just accidentally drove into Burnaby unless somebody told you. <laughs> um, but uh, let me see, what do I else want to say here really briefly? I mean, you can just see here as we're scrolling on the screen here, like these are just li these are just the the brief listing of her accomplishments. Um, you know, she's only the second person to ever score at five World Cups. Uh, you know, she's played in five World Cups, three Olympic tournaments. She's been shortlisted for the FIFA World Player of the Year seven times. Like, that's... The other people on that list are Ronaldo and Messi, etc., right? So, you know, pretty good company for an athlete to be. Obviously, Christine Sinclair doesn't get the same amount of recognition and fame as her male... Um, counterparts, and I'm sure most women watching are like, yeah, of course. That tell me, tell me something I don't know about life in general, right? Um, but uh, she certainly has done um, enough accomplishments to deserve greater recognition. Um, let me see. Uh, let's let's just take a look at, at a couple of stories that are are in the, uh, the the video description below. If you want a little bit more information about here, this is a great article, really sort of talking about her her whole life and her evol like well, I was gonna say the evolution <laughs> of her from from just a, a young girl here in the in Vancouver area to a global superstar. Um, here's her bio on Canada Walk of Fame. Um, and then I did think uh, I was going to show a little. Well, I, I can't show any of this, but again, the Olympic ceremonies was earlier this morning, um, and uh, the you know Japan's best female tennis player, or probably best tennis player of all time, anyway, Naomi Osaka was the one that lit the cauldron. So, anyway, let's. Uh, Let's dive right into the painting itself and then talk about how we're going to accomplish this. So generally, if what I do and 
what I would say most artists would do if they were going to try to paint this painting is to usually work from the background to the foreground. And so what I do is I start in the background, get a good beginning on the background. All this green is, we'll paint all of this stuff first. And then we're going to go and paint Christine Sinclair, the athlete here, and the ball. And then we're going to go back and finish the background. And then we're going to come back and finish the, the figure in the foreground, Christine Sinclair again. <laughs> um, and ideally, that will take us to the very end of the painting. And just as a real kind of rough estimate time-wise, I suspect it'll probably take us maybe 25 minutes to, to do the, the backgrounds to kind of just block that in really quickly. And then it'll probably take us about 40 minutes to do the first layer of color on, you know, on her body. Maybe, maybe a little bit faster, we'll see. I don't have an exact plan yet of how I want to do all of that. And then it should take us maybe another half hour to do the background, and then I would say another hour to do the, the figure. So we're looking at somewhere around two and a half hours to do today's painting. So we'll we'll see. That means you know we should, if we're looking at the time in the top right corner, that should be about eight o'clock by the time we're done. So this looks like it's almost dry. So to help speed up the painting process, I am going to just use a blow dryer to quickly uh, dry this yellow. So let me just mute the microphone so it doesn't blow out your speed. Okay, so let's now start mixing some paint. I think maybe I'll start at the very top here and just lay in some quick colors for the crowd that's in the background. Then we'll paint this, kind of the, the back wall, and then the green down here. So also another thing to think about, one of the, the when it comes to using color that we do, is we use some cool colors for the background and warm colors for the foreground. And we use one yellow for, or a, a cool yellow, a warm yellow, a cool blue, and a warm blue, and a cool red, and a warm red. So we have two of each, I guess, primary colors as people often see them. And I like to put this big black line there. So remember, this is sort of my true north here. You don't have to put the colors in the arrangement that I do it, but uh, um, it's it works for me. So do with, the, <laughs> do with it what you will. You know, I always say to people, hey, why don't you, if, the, if you're watching the video live, then what's great about watching it live is you can see me painting the painting in real time. There's no edits. There's uh, no, you know, there's no surprises. I'm not cheating in any way. And you can, if I make mistakes, you you can see how I fix my my mistakes. On the other hand, if you're watching this video after it was recorded, which is the vast majority of people do. Just go right to the very end. Just, just stop literally right now. Go check out the, the end of the video and then ask yourself, like, what do you think? Do you, do you like how it turned out? Is this a painting you want to make on your own? I would say, for the most part, the results speak for themselves, right? Um, and so if you're, you're questioning the wisdom of any of the decisions that I make, I just say, like, well, it's, it works. I don't know. I don't know how you argue with uh, with success, right? So anyway, I've got my 
warm yellow, warm red, cool red on here. Got my warm blue, my cool blue, and my cool yellow on here. And I'm gonna put some white right in the middle. Great, <laughs> okay. So, um, and I don't worry, I still got your question in the back of my mind, Maria, about style and technique. Great question. That's maybe like, a, that's a brilliant question. Um, I just want to get started here. Because often, I don't, I think most, I don't, I don't get too many negative comments these days. But in my own mind, I think like sometimes I just babble too much. And that's why some of these videos take so long. Um, so I'm always mindful of trying to keep the, the ship moving here. Okay. The background that we have in this painting is pretty complicated. You re you'll recall months and months ago, actually one of the very first episodes of our master study class, we did a painting of, of, of a baseball players, right? It uh, was a, um, a Lawrence... Oh my goodness, why is that just going to drive me crazy? Um, come on. It was a Jacob Lawrence painting. And I'll just, actually, let's just pop that up on the screen here. Just so as a refresher. So, you know, and I was moving pretty fast to try to get all of this detail into the background. It ended up... Um, it, it was useful to, to do a bunch of that detail because in Jacob Lawrence's painting we can see these figures here versus in this painting this is it's very blurry and very indistinct right so we can get away with a little bit more that we weren't able to do when we were painting the Jacob Lawrence painting what I'm going to suggest we do is that we mix a um, a cold or cool gray color to start and we can apply that almost everywhere in that top kind of th third of the painting and then we can as after that's in there we can start adding a few extra little colors in there and kind of blend them out a bit to give it the look of an out of focus crowd right so to get a, a gray you could easily just take some black and white, boom, boom, you got gray. That works great. You know, we've got a black and we may use a little bit of black in this painting, but longtime viewers know that I, even though we can do that, I like to show people that we can make dark colors, we can make browns, we can make grays with just what we have here right now. We can make almost every single color in the visible spectrum with what we have here on the palette. And I think understanding how to do that just makes the rest of the painting process, I think, so much easier. Because you're like, oh, you know what? I can do anything with this. I don't need to go spend thousands of dollars by every tube of paint at the art supply store. So what we're going to do to make a cool gray is let's, where should we mix this um i don't have too much yellow in this painting so let's put we'll mix this right up here we're gonna take some cool yellow or cold yellow right and then we're gonna take some cool blue and i'm gonna make a bit of this so we mix this together the first thing you see is like wow that's a really nice green but it's also like a little bit too electric of a green so if you're thinking like oh let's put this green in the painting we could maybe for the background but even if I put it in the background I'm, I would add some white to it because it's just too electric it's too candy colored so let's even put a little bit more yellow in here okay so we got now a cool green electric green but we want to turn this into a gray so before we even get to a, a gray, we want to turn this into a brown, right? So I'm going to take some cool red. Now we mix this together. And we've got a dark, cool brown. And it's also lost a lot of its in color intensity because you know we're mixing right across the color wheel here. 
Uh, although, you know, I kind of, we, we could use a bit of this color, actually, even though it's not a gray as I was, a, I was, a, but let's, let's still keep on going here, even though I, uh, there's a good use for this color in the background, just for the sake of our discussion, I want to keep on going. So we've got a very cool gray. Right now, it's it's a bit on the muddy green side. If we want to make it a little bit more brown, let's actually just do that. Let's take a bit more red. We add that to it, it becomes more brownish. Right, whenever you're making a brown, you can make a greenish brown, you can make a bluish brown, you can make a yellowish brown. Um, but now let's take a bit more, let's actually now, to get a gray, we need four, at least four colors. So brown, you need three colors. To make a gray, you need at least four colors. So we add some of this warm blue into this mixture. And now we're like really canceling out the some of the coolness, even though it's still cool, but now it's becoming less brown and more of a muddy kind of color here. It's still cool, even though we've got one warm color. Now I'm gonna take a bit of white, let's put this off to the side here, and just mix some of our color in here. Okay, and there you go, you got a cool ground, or a cool, a cool gray, a cool ground. Um, so now let's take this cool gray and we mix the cool gray because it's in the background right and we're going to use warm colors for the foreground including her body and i'm just going to quickly paint this cool gray into the background and we'll just see how that, right and i'm using a big brush because i just want to fill this area in as quickly as possible. This is a little bit on the darker, well actually I was going to say it, then I look at the screen, I was going to say it's a little bit on the darker side, but it might be just right. Don't be afraid to go a little bit over top of some of these pencil lines because we're going to be, you know, part of the reason why we want to paint the background first is so that when we do the foreground, we can cover up a little bit of the background and it'll make it look like the foreground figure is in front of the background, which is the way it should be, right? We'd, it would be weird if if the background was competing with the foreground which happens on occasion and that's often kind of a mistake that beginner artists make i'm also remember i accidentally sanded that corner a little bit too much so i'm just going to as i paint in here be mindful just try to build up a little bit more paint there to to kind of hide that or uh, bury that in there okay so I like what this, how this looks right now. I am gonna move on, I'm, even though I've got this paint already mixed, and let's start, uh, let's do this gr the green. Although we could do, this, I'm just thinking about these rings right now. Um, you know what, let's, uh, I'm going to take a bit of white. I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea. Let's 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 do a test here. I'm going to paint white over these rings. I mean, I don't mind, and I'm going to I'm okay if I get a little bit of texture here um, because we're going to paint over this, and I want to be able to see these lines and if I paint over it obviously I'm gonna cover up these uh, the rings now as a professional artist who've been painting for over know, 25 years or so it I'm actually I was gonna do this in a different color just so we can see how which one works best um, let's just take some warm blue 
As a professional artist, I'm not super concerned about losing these lines because I have confidence in my ability to paint them later on and um, without even, without a guide. But I know many beginners, you know, once we start, if lines start that they've traced or drawn onto the canvas start getting painted out, some people start getting kind of anxious. Like, oh no, I, oh geez, how am I gonna do this painting? All my uh, lines that I was gonna rely on to help me are gone. Uh -oh. So I'm just painting those in because we'll, we'll see which one is most effective. You know, one might think, well, the darker lines are obviously gonna be way more effective, but you know, sometimes if we do a thin layer over top of white, that white is, is pretty persistent at coming through the color. So this will be a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how that works. So while this is drying, let's work on the green down below. And you know, I, it's funny. I was I was just saying that that bright green was a little bit intense, but it is a, a nice cool green. So let's see if we can actually make it work. So let's take some of this cool yellow and need a little bit more of it. I'm going to take some cool yellow and some cool blue and let's mix this together. And then I'm going to take a bit of white. Just mix this in here a bit. We could add a little bit of gray. That might also help a bit. But we're, this is still going to be an under layer. So I'm not super concerned about making it perfect. You know, if you've watched a few of these episodes before, I often, you know, I just launch right into these paintings. And I don't fuss too much over getting these first, uh, you know, the first maybe hour of the painting, quote unquote, correct. Right, because it doesn't really matter so much how well done your first layer is. I mean, you could literally paint in almost any color into these spaces. It, it certainly would help if you paint in the, the so-called right colors. But even if you don't, it's not a, you know, a make it or break it kind of thing. So I'm just taking this and I'm just going to blend that out kind of rough. Something like that. Like, look how electric that green is. Right? It looks pretty... It looks weird, right? Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to paint a warm green, and we're going to kind of come back up and even go over top of that layer. Um, and I'm just... What I'm doing right now is I'm just going over... I don't, I don't really like ridges in my paint. So I'm just making sure, I don't care if I get, you know, some of these colors going over top of the body at all. I just don't want the, to have to deal with ridges. Because the other thing too is, is they also take a little bit longer to paint. And when I'm trying to make this painting in a relatively timely manner, anything that's going to slow down the painting process, I want to avoid. Okay. I might just quickly blow dry this as well here. So again, I'll mute this.
Okay. So. <laughs> um, let's mix the, the, I'm just going to get this extra paint off. I don't want these brushes just sitting there on the table getting drying up. Because, you know, occasionally, even in these classes, you know, I, I put a brush down, like, okay, I'm going to use that in just a few minutes. And then in the chaos that happens, it rolls off and kind of gets a little bit hidden. And I don't notice it until even after the show's over and I'm cleaning up. And then I'm like, oh, no, this thing is like hard as a stick. And you can try to rescue these paintings, but or the paintbrushes, but they um, are forever grumpy with you. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's some warm yellow, the same yellow that we put down here on the bottom. And let's take some warm, uh, warm blue, and we'll just mix these together. And we'll maybe put a lot more yellow into that color. Now, you should note it, you should see really quickly, like, look at the difference between these two colors right so when people say what's the difference like why why bother using a warm yellow and warm red and you know why not just one yellow it's because look at the result so what i'm doing now is i'm putting down this warm yellow in the foreground i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna blend it back up a little bit higher and this is still this is not the finished part of the grass I'm just kind of building the structure underneath where the grass is eventually going to be So in the center area, we've got kind of warm and cool green. Because this is a, it's a little bit of an unusual situation. I don't know if we've even covered this yet. Like we have one green that is, you know, the same grass that is, it starts in the foreground and moves towards the background. So how do we deal with that particular situation? Um, well, in this case, what we want is to kind of build a structure underneath, because we can potentially just apply this same color, or the color we eventually use for the grass over top of all of this. And because we've got some cool color here, it'll just naturally push the color that's on top backwards. It'll cool it down. Um, okay, so let's leave all of that to dry on the bottom. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint, um, I'm gonna paint a purple right across here, right? So we're gonna mix up a, a kind of a cooler purple in, in that background area. So let's take some cool red and a bit of cool or warm blue, mix that together and get this quite vibrant purple. And let's just put that in the background here. Remember I was saying that this, so we can see a bit of the white rings showing through. So let's see what it looks like on the other side here. Now clearly this darker blue is coming through much better. 
And I'm sure there's some people who are saying, well, obviously, duh. It's a darker color, and so of course it's going to shine through. And in this case, yes, it's it. Um, but if we were applying, like, so the color we just mixed is a fairly transparent uh, purple. A dark. If we were to paint black over here, however, it would obviously obliterate, you know, both of these. This one, the dark one, we might see a little bit of the texture here, but I bet if we painted a black over top of this white, we might see a little bit of that white would kind of come through a little bit more. And I think as this dries, that white is going to continue rising through here. Whereas later on, when we do another coat of this purple over top of these blue rings, we might people might change their mind and go like oh this guy's not such a fool after all <laughs> uh, but that by that time they've probably tuned out and, but uh, what are you gonna do right okay so right now we've got a pretty good start on our background I think I do want to spend another uh, few minutes doing a little bit of texture in the background creating the look of some people that might be in the stands so but you know we've got if you wanted you could just skip this next step to get the people in the background and you know you know you can go you know order some dinner or something or, <laughs> or if the video is already been recorded you could just skip ahead but what I want to do now we've got this gray that we had mixed previously I'm just gonna start mixing a very different colors into this gray so that we can give the effect of you know different you know different people wearing different shirts etc so let's just sort of take a look back there maybe let's just take some of this purple since we've got it on our brush right now let's take a bit of that mix it in here and then I'm just gonna kind of smudge little things. Now, you could be a little bit more careful with this kind of thing, but my concern is not for the background in, at all in any way, so I am just gonna speed through that. Get a little bit of that purple in there. What's next? Let's maybe take a bit of this blue, mix this blue into some of this now there's kind of these rows of people so I'm just gonna kind of quickly it out or in whichever way you want to think about it okay um, let's see how about we take a bit of yellow this is cool yellow So the idea is just kind of spreading color around here in as random a way as possible. Okay, in fact, I'm just going to use a different brush to do some of the blurring. Okay. 
Okay, how about... Let's take some cool red. Notice I'm using all cool colors so far, right? And I'm blending it into this dark color. Because I don't want too many colors that are going to be too bright. Otherwise, it's going to look a little bit funny. I think I guess I used a little bit of this. Oh, I guess that was purple that I put down there. And again, I just, before they kind of set in, because this acrylic paint dries quickly, just try to get in there and blend things out. Like ultimately we want this to be as like a totally forgettable part of the painting that we don't really know, notice or think too much about. Um, and you know, I re actually am really digging this color and I think I want some of that dark all on the bottom down here as well. So I'm just gonna take the same kind of muddy color you can always brighten this up later. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm just gonna quickly come in here and soften some of these edges out a bit. And as I'm painting, the my brush is getting drier and drier, right? So I'm allowing it to get dry because what I like is it allows me, the dry brush technique is a great way of giving that little bit of a blurry kind of look. Okay, and then lastly, let's take, um, let's actually let's take a bit of white. Just take some, make a, a light gray. You can notice I'm just sort of using a bunch of the paint that's here. We have a few areas in that crowd where we got brighter things, right? Again, I'm just gonna take my brush. You gotta be kind of quick about this. Otherwise that white is kind of gonna bake itself in into pretty sharp lines. Remember, that's this is what it looked like when I first put it down, right? So if you have, let's say, maybe a line that's a little bit too sharp, just put in a bit more on top. And use that to help blend a few things out. Okay, and then let's do the exact opposite here. So I use that white. I mean, now let's go to a dark color. I'm just wiping off most of that white off there. And let's just go back to this dark and start putting some more dark color, dark gray. I'll probably glaze some, a dark over top of a bunch of this. Just to really push it back, but I won't really know until later on in the in the painting process what it looks like. That's why 
I like to go spend a little time in the foreground before finishing the background completely. So, now I would say we've got the background done, or not done, but the, that first layer, really happy with the way that looks. So let's just clean off some of these brushes. So there's IB Com C Ram Sundar uh, just tuned in. I've seen you uh, tune in a few times lately. Good morning. Where on where would you be right now? Where what's on the other side of the planet right now? Europe, Africa, India, China. I think would be all on the other side of the planet. So wherever you are, good morning. <laughs> Okay, so let's now move to Christine Sinclair here in the foreground, and maybe let's start out by mixing a skin tone. I also say, you know, you don't have to paint Christine Sinclair. If you want to turn this into an American soccer player, a Japanese soccer player, whatever ethnicity, what it doesn't even could even be a male soccer player if you want. You could easily turn this into. Uh, you know, your favorite uh, Vancouver Whitecaps player or um, uh, Real Madrid player, wh whoever, right? You've got the basic shape of a, of a person here and it wouldn't be too hard to modify this image into anything you like. Anyway, uh, let's make a, a warm skin tone. So to do that, let's take some warm yellow. I think we'll, uh, where should we put that? Let's do this down here, I think. Take some warm uh, yellow and take some warm red. And mix that together. That's a little bit too much red, so it's gonna do this again next to it. So we got a nice orange here, right? Basically what we're gonna do is mix a very, very light brown. Take a bit of blue, warm blue. And by mixing blue into this um, uh, orange, we, we make a brown, right? The more blue I put in there is just gonna make that brown darker. All right, so that's a good start. Now let's take some white and mix white into this color. And we're, we're in the zone here. So we can fine tune this later on. As I said, I'm not really concerned at this point about nailing all of that. Let's actually go to a, a smaller brush. And then we'll try to get some of the shape of her body back in here. So, and also, if I, in doubt, I'm gonna paint a little bit over top of the background. There's a little bit of where the, the background came over top of her hand. I'm not too worried about that. If it's a really big issue, then I can always just paint a little bit of white there and it disappears. And I can paint over top of it. Any Anytime you make a mistake with acrylic, let it dry, put some white over top of it, and then you can paint your color back over there and you'd never know. So. Okay. 
Okay. So, for instance, like this leg right there. Well, I guess that's shadow, so I'm not. Don't, that doesn't bother me so much. I think that'll actually work kind of nicely as a shadow. So sometimes all these things happen as happy accidents, like Bob Ross is so famous for saying, right? Okay. I think I'm good for that color for right now. So clean off these brushes. We're going to really quickly put in the color of her jersey. Um, oh, and you know what? I can use this gray that I had from before, or if I need to mix more of it. Remember, I can just, I'm just going to use a cool gray. It's not going to be so important to get the right gray just yet. And I'm just going to take that, because her shoes are kind of gray, right? I think that underneath here is a bit more of a, of a, uh, bluish color hmm, I guess I could have painted that a little bit more darker so you know I'm just gonna get a bit darker paint on here back to the, a little bit lighter color for the top part of her shoe. I guess it's basically just like red on most of her outfit, except for her her kind of dark brown, almost black hair, really. Okay. So the red that I'm going to put down is basically the, a warm red. I'm just going to take the warm red right out of the tube. Over the great thing with red is is it's a relatively transparent color. Almost all reds are very transparent. So um, I can still see all of the the drawing underneath here very clearly. I don't think it shows up very well on camera. But I can see it, so, and if you're painting along with me, probably can see that as well. So again, you can see that there's definitely some places where when I painted the background color over top of the red jersey and, and shorts here, that when I paint the red over there, it gets, it changes the color and it goes a little bit darker. I don't mind that either. It's not not a problem I need to concern myself with, at least at this point. Maybe let's just zoom in quickly so people can...
Okay. So I'm pretty happy with with where we are time-wise and how much we've been able to accomplish here. And we've been painting for about 45 minutes now. Oops, let's move this up here. Because everything we've just done here is all the most really I would say the most important part of the painting once if you can get this down then a lot of the other stuff is just gonna fall into place okay my overhead camera just overheated one second here And I guess let's paint the soccer ball white. Maybe, I think, yeah, we'll paint it white and then I think maybe what we'll do is as we get a little bit further on, I might even just Google what the, the soccer ball looks like that they're using at the Olympics, maybe, because often these soccer balls are customized and have a special paint scheme on there. But for the but the shape obviously stays circular, and then they always have this these hexagons on there. So regardless of how wild the ball actually turns out to be, it still will will use the uh, the basic outline of this form. So. Okay, and then. For her hair, even though it's it's quite dark, let's actually let's go right down here. You know, we have a really dark black hair. You can see like when there it's thinner, when there's less of this big mass of hair, when it's up against the light, it's much lighter. It's a kind of a brown. So I'm going to mix a brown, actually we, we can just use the color, oops, that we, we started right here. Uh, you know what, maybe just for, I'm going to mix it separately to the side here so I don't give me a little more leeway here. So there's some warm red, some warm yellow, I need a little more of that, Let's take a bit of blue and then we get this kind of reddish brown if I add more yellow to it it'll go a little bit lighter brown but I think that's probably in fact let's take a little bit more yellow okay and Let's use my bigger brush here. Let's zoom in. Ah, I'll need to take my smaller brush.
It looks kind of funny right now. But that's okay. Looks like she's got a, a toque on or a hat on or some kind of... It's pretty funny, but... Okay. <laughs> so... Um, if we zoom out on this painting as well. So after, you know, that's basically, we started painting about 5.30 or so. So for 45 minutes of painting, to be able to get here, I think is great, right? This would be, if you wanted to take a break, you wanted to stop for the day, this is where I would like to get to. This would be an ideal um, place because now you could let things dry. So if you're painting with oil paint, oops, let's go back here. Um, if you're painting with oil paint, a lot of artists will begin in acrylic, get to this point, and then paint the oil over top of this. and. They don't want to have to wait for oil paint to dry for a couple of weeks. This would be a great place to to um, to, to to switch from one medium to the other. Okay, so this is a, probably a good place now for me to answer Maria's question while this kind of dries a little bit. She asked um, almost exactly an hour ago. Since you're talking about style, quick question: Do you think we have to learn the techniques before? and then develop our style? Or is it possible to do it the other way around? That's a million dollar question. Um, personally, I think knowing how to do lots of different techniques gives you lots more options, right? So the more that you understand how to paint abstract, how to paint more realistic, how to paint very quickly, how to do glazes and some of the slower techniques. The more that you have of those things in your tool belt, your metaphorical, I always think of like knowing all this stuff is like, uh, you know, a, a handyman who goes into, you know, a, or a fire, a fireman or firewoman goes into a burning building and doesn't know what, what's going to be there, right? And you have like your tools and then you show up and you're like, okay, I can use this or I can use this. And they do very different things, right? Uh, I think it's really helpful to know all those things because then when it comes to expressing yourself, you're not limited by the, the limited knowledge that you have. It's the same sort of thing with, with just like literally language when it comes to talking or writing, right? If you've ever traveled somewhere and you know like, maybe three or four words of that language, well, it's going to limit the kind of things that you're going to be able to do, right? If you only know how to say hi and bye, where's the toilet and, you know, uh, where's the train or the bus, museum, well, you're not going to go see a local comedy show in uh, Italian, or you're not going to uh, probably go to the market and try to, you know, bargain with people over, um, you know, handmade crafts, right? So the more of the more knowledge you have of the language, the more you're going to be able to do. So having said that, there are examples of artists that just shot right out of the canon and had a very clear idea what they wanted to do at the very beginning. And, and therefore, if you want to paint totally representational photorealistic painting, then learning to paint in a more abstract style, what use would that have? Again, I would say, well, maybe you're just painting in that style because that's all you know. Like even myself, I just a, a real quick, like I've, you know, the more I've, the, I've been teaching these classes, the more diverse styles I've been exploring, it is causing a bit of like, in my own mind, like, wow, uh, now that I really know how to paint anything, what am I gonna do <laughs> with my own art practice? Because um, I'm, I'm painting a graphic novel right now, a comic book, and when that's done, ideally by the end of the year, 
I'll be able to do anything I want again, and I, I, I don't have a plan yet. <laughs> so, um, so the, sometimes having lots of options also creates, um, you can be overwhelmed because, well, if I can paint anything, I'm not limited by anything, what do I do? And so ours sometimes work really well with limitations. Um, you know, it's a great, great question. Great question. And I often, often, you know, I teach a lot of um, first year classes at Emily Carr, the university I teach at. And, you know, you hear from students who say like, you know, I have some friends that didn't want to go to art school because they didn't want to get, um, uh, what, what's the word they use? Um, I didn't want my natural ability to be sort of tainted or poisoned by all this other stuff. The idea that learning lots of things will corrupt you in some way. You know, I don't know. I don't know if you were to ask a chef that, like, oh, learn, go, going and learning all the different tech, French cooking techniques is going to, you know, and you're, a, let's say, a, a Mexican chef who does pr primarily traditional Mexican food, and then you learn how to, how to do uh, French haute cuisine, I think that would give you lots more options, and you'd be able to, like, incorporate some French cooking into your Mexican cooking, and that, I, I think, would only make things better. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's some people who would be like, no, but you're, then you're gonna, you're gonna stray from the pure, authentic Mexican food. I, um... You know, so again, for every argument there's that I can put forward, I'm sure there's somebody else who can make the opposite argument. But there is a sizable number of people who really firmly don't believe that going to art school, like that it's it's going to make you a, a worse artist. I don't know. I teach at an art school, so you probably already know my feelings on that. Anyway, uh, great question, Maria. Absolutely. So again, you, you hear, you know what I think about that, but... Um, you know, again, if, if you st if you start developing your style along the way, then you may find it less necessary to explore other styles that don't have anything to do with the style, the, the direction you're on. Like, at some point, it is helpful to just go in one direction, right? If you're trying to go in every single direction, you end up not moving at all. Um, so at some point, you have to, like, okay, I'm just going to go down this road for a while and see where it takes me. And then if I get down there and I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure I'm happy with where I am, well, then you turn around and then you go back in a different direction, right? So, and I think all that's great because that's, I think it's fun to explore lots of things like that. Okay. So, um, we've got our a really solid underpainting down here. Let's, uh, let's start really finishing. I want to get the whole background done here within the next maybe 20 minutes or so. So the question is like this here, how much work do I really need, do I really want to do back there to be quite honest? Um, because I, 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 I don't mind it like that. And like part, I almost have the instinct just to make that darker and darker and darker rather than to try to bring out, you know, like, like things that I, when I look at this, I see, you know, a couple figures that are pretty distinct back there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a, a really, like a dark color. One of my darkest colors. Or, or, you know, we can still use this dark gray that we mixed here. I'm just going to put maybe some more blue into it to darken it down even more. And let's take a bit of cool red. Maybe a bit of warm blue in here. So right now it's got a very purpley quality. If we take a bit of yellow in here. Actually, that's a pretty good color for the grass back there. A little bit of white that might work too so we'll see about this 
Um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is so you can go to a smaller brush. I'm going to take a small brush. Let's let's zoom into this background area. And I'm just going to try to like maybe draw a few kind of like Kind of like little heads back here. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my brush and, and brush some of that out and I can just kind of go back I just want this to be pretty subtle. And the way that we get the, this kind of look of just a big mass of various colors is sort of just doing what we're doing right now. We could vary this a little bit, just sort of like what we were doing earlier. Maybe add a bit of diff slightly different color into this mix. I'm just letting them dry just a little bit before I start trying to blend them away. Otherwise, they'll just blend completely away. Oops, that's, this is a wet brush. I want my, <laughs> my dry brush. And I'm just going to put the, like a little bit of a line back here. like subtlety is the key here and I, I do think like sometimes I overthink backgrounds but backgrounds are really important for artwork and and often we can be pretty lazy with them and I think they end up kind of pulling down the overall quality of a painting um, and then let's do the same thing with get a bit of red
Okay. I'm letting this dry a little bit. You gotta be very careful with this kind of blending. Otherwise it just you do get kind of big blob shapes, whereas I want a little bit more specific marks, so you kinda have to like I'm bare like I'm really just lightly touching the the brush as it kind of goes over top of these surfaces here. Let's, I'm just gonna take maybe a bit more, I'm gonna take some cool red. Cause maybe these are like some Canadian fans. Even though there's supposed to be no fans in the stands. And I just, I've started thinking about that like, oh, maybe what we should have done is, is had a actually blank stands back there for the 2020 Olympics because there's nobody supposed to be there. Like, ah. Well, this doesn't have to be this Olympics. She's been playing... What did I say? She's been to th five Olympics? Or, or is it three I can't remember so she's you know this is old hat for her she's one of these these athletes that, that has been basically competing for her whole life at this level so okay that's I think that I think that's good I, I think if I want, I can glaze this and make it a little bit darker and even a little bit more foggy, but um, I think what I want to do now is this purple strip going back here. So I'm just going to quickly clean a couple of brushes. Um, and let's, I'm going to take, I need a little bit more cool red. I don't need too much of it, so some cool red, warm blue. I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Gotta be careful because that white will change the purple really quickly. If you're unhappy with the purple you get, add just a tiny like that might have been like a couple of little grains of purple. Okay, so See the Olympic rings disappeared on that side. What will happen on this side here? So what I'm going to do, just to get a little bit more of a blend, I'm just going to wipe off excess paint on here. I was going to try to do it with my little bit larger brush, and it was just, it was actually too dry. So I'm just going over.
we go. I just don't want there to be, I want there to be some small confusion as to where the beginning and end of that shape actually rests. Okay, so let's now. Uh, I pretty. I think I'm going to move on from the from the crowd. I'll paint the rings in here later. Um, maybe once. Obviously, I'm going to wait for that purple to dry out a little bit more. So let's work on the grass down here. So previously, what we did is we mixed a cool green, painted that halfway down, and then we took a warm green and painted it uh, from the bottom half up. So what we'll do now is we're just going to mix one green that we're going to paint over all of this. And we're going to start at the bottom. And as we go further and further back, we're going to add more and more white to it. Um, and where there's a few places, like in behind up here, we're going to add some gray into that same color. So we'll have mostly white that we're adding in the color because white will make that color recede. Okay, so if we just sort of look here, we're going to take a darker uh, green and then go a little bit lighter as we go back. So, and let's just sort of even look at the colors we've got here. You know, this green that we had back here, that was our, our warm, or sorry, cool yellow and cool blue. And then here we have our warm on the bottom warm yellow and warm blue very different colors right very different greens i actually i quite like this color but it's just too intense so why don't we just do a quick little experiment and just think about rather than um what if we tried to use some cool blue and warm yellow for a mixture which we can do let's see we'll do this right here Yeah, well, let's just mix the color first, and then you can see. All right. Oh, look at that. All right, so we're kind of we're splitting it on both sides. We're using a bit of a cool color and a warm color, and we get a little bit closer to the actual color of the grass. And it is a little bit poppier, so what if we put a bit of cold yellow in there as well? Okay. So I'm happy with this. So let's just start at the bottom of the painting down here. You know what, I wonder, I might just take this same color and just paint the whole area. And then afterwards, do some subsequent layers over top of it. I'm not even sure. Let's just, let's see. Like, what is the easiest way for us to approach this painting?
it's a bit on the darker side, isn't it? I didn't expect it to be, well, yeah, it's darker than I expected it to be. I think as it dries, it's gonna lighten up a little bit. But I think I might save that for a glaze, perhaps. I'm just thinking out loud to myself. I mean, if it's not already clear, there's infinite ways of making a painting. So they're just I'm sort of cycling around in my mind thinking, well, if there's all these different ways of doing this, what's the best way? What's the fastest way? The easiest way for for my audience? You can definitely see it's darker on the bottom than it is in the back. Um, I kind of like those colors. I like this green and the purple side by side, though. Um, I think there's there is white in a lot. Okay, so one of the tricky things with grass is. It's not a solid surface, right? It's made up of millions of little individual pieces of grass, each one which has highlights and, and each one that has lighter uh, or darker like shadows, right? So if you were a photorealist painter, well, what you would do is you would really try to paint almost every single little detail individually. Now, I'm not going to do that, so I'm always trying to think of like, what's the... I really want to think about like areas, clumps of grass that we can paint in here. Um, I think it's funny, like that that green. I might, it, I probably went a little bit, I probably should not have put that cold yellow in. I think that cold yellow really spiced it up more than it needed to be. Whereas the original color with just the cold blue and the warm uh, yellow, I think was working pretty well. So I'm gonna take some of this, this is the previous color. This was my warm blue and warm uh, yellow. Let's add a bit of cold blue into this mixture. And some more warm yellow. Let's see if we can how close we can get to that. See, that's probably what the color I should be using there. Okay. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush like this. And I'm going to start kind of going kind of left to right across the field. Still a little bit, yeah, let's put a little bit more warm yellow in there. And as I go, I'm going to try to blend things out a bit. Okay. 
I actually should have blow dried this because it's a little bit tacky. Yeah, I'm scraping paint off. Okay, so I'm gonna blow dry this because there's the paint is I'm now starting to pull paint off. So give me one second here. Okay, okay. I think I'm gonna add some white into here. I have to be careful not to add too much. Yeah, I think that's better. You know, it's it's like a it's trial and error when you're making a painting, right? You're um it doesn't always come so easy. And actually I'm gonna put some glazing fluid in here because we don't need to make these super thick opaque layers anymore we can get a little bit thinner and use the color that's underneath to kind of come through a bit Hmm. Not super happy with how brushy this is. Um, but uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of cold yellow into this color. Maybe even a bit of darker color, kind of a gray, I'll add into here.
Hmm. Well, I'm not. I'm not too keen on on the grass, but I think what I'm going to do next, I'm going to draw um, the the white line across here. And then, uh, well, actually, I'm going to blow dry this first. Then I'm going to add the white line, and then I think I'm going to. I, I, what I'm, I think my problem is I'm thinking about this in too big of. Ch I need to chunk this down into smaller pieces. So we'll blow dry it. We'll draw some lines with the ruler. Okay, so still a little bit tacky. The original has this line kind of coming through. I've painted, uh, I think, yeah, I painted that line out, so I can't quite see it, but let's see if I can get something similar. wasn't quite dry so I pulled some paint up and I got a line there and then there's another one not quite well it's almost parallel okay so let's paint these and I'm gonna actually so I'm going to take a little bit of the this grassy green and add white to it rather than just paint a white line right across. I can always brighten it up later, but I want to be still a part of this soccer field, right? Uh, let's maybe start with this line here. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now, like I think even just that helps a bit, right? Um, because what I'm gonna do is is now just think of like little patches of grass here. Uh, it is a little bit tricky because I wanna try to have some lines kind of going behind her, but um, yeah, actually I feel a lot better about that. And I think the other thing, that is a little deceiving is we don't have the shadows here yet and the shadows are, will make a big difference that will really grant because right now she's sort of floating in this big green blob and it's it's a little confusing for the eye so let's go back let's take the smaller brush um and then we're just gonna be modifying things so 
what was this color before? This was, I need some more warm yellow. And some warm yellow and cool blue. And some white. Is mostly warm yellow and some white. And now I'm just gonna I'm gonna work in much smaller kind of patches. And I'm gonna take a, one of my smallest square brushes and Just doing these like little horizontal lines here. All right, and we'll put, even put a few back here. And I'm, as I'm going, I'm going to use some like slightly different combinations, maybe a little bit more warm yellow, and maybe a little bit more white or blue. It's kind of quite bright right back here. It's interesting, I've, I don't think I've ever painted a kind of a landscape like this. I, I, I didn't really think of this painting as a landscape. I thought of it as like a figurative painting. And I, uh, painting it now, I realize like, this is a very unusual landscape. Like most of the time, if we're painting grass, you know, it's on a hill and we have lots of different you know, the grass goes up and down and around and all this kind of stuff. Here, this grass is intended to be as flat and even as as possible. And so it's it becomes very subtle, the differences between the different areas, right? It's, it's as I'm thinking, it's like, wow, this is doing something I've never done before, right? It's cause, forcing me to flex some creative muscles that have never had to be used in this way before. I can also disguise any kind of issues I had along the way here. See, already this is making me feel much better. It 
is, yes, it's taking me a little bit longer than I was expecting. I was hoping to be painting on the foreground at this point, but you know, it's it it, it takes as long as it's going to take. Um. So let's um. I'm just going to take maybe a little bit of warm blue here, a tiny bit of it, and put this into our mixture a bit. Let's maybe take a bit more cool blue. Just we have we can make slightly darker patches. Maybe we can even let's just test out like the shadow here. darken all that obviously but Okay, I feel like I'm back on track here. Again, let's maybe take a bit more warm blue. Okay, so I just now want to get this dark area in the back done. So I'm going to take some of this dark color and our cold blue. As this brush gets a little bit dry, I can blend it out a bit. The, the 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 edge of the field is creeping closer and closer towards her. Um, I don't mind that. In fact, let's. Uh, I'm gonna take this color. Let's take a 
put a bit of glazing fluid in there just to liquefy it a little bit. just hmm my mop brush not blending that well because I took my sweet time before I got the blending brush out here so to do this I should really blow dry before I do too much more yeah I'm gonna have to do that and I may even raise so I'm spending way too much time on this part of the painting which is driving me bonkers but it's kind of... Okay, so uh, rather than finagle there, this little line in behind here is what I want to tackle really quickly. Um, let's get a little bit more white. Okay, took some glazing fluid.
blow dry that one. Okay, so I'm just going to, I think I'm going to do the Olympic rings really quickly. Um, clean some brushes. Sounded like I was about to give a toast here. <laughs> okay. May I have your attention, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. So. Oh, let's. This is my 200th live stream. I didn't even think about it until I was writing that number down. Wow. Okay. So for uh, those Olympic rings in the background, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take my my uh, dark color again. Turn it into a gray. And I'm gonna put a bunch of glazing fluid in that just to thin it out a bit. And also so I can do any blending, should I wish. Okay, I'm gonna wipe the paint off my brush. So this color is, is like a pretty subtle color considering how dark everything is. Let's, uh, let's draw these rings back on here. And see, like, what do those, these rings actually look like? No, they...
I think this mop brush is a little bit wet. So I'm not getting the cleanest blend. That's okay. We'll see. You know, maybe I'll even decide to paint these out later. I don't know. So I'm painting a really th thin uh, glaze of these layers, of these rings. And they're going to fade a little bit as, the, as they dry, so that's another thing to kind of keep in mind. Okay, so let's move on from the background. I just spent maybe half hour longer on there than I was expecting, but I'm happy with the way where we are regardless. I do feel like I just want to come up darken some of this right next to her head. Right now it looks like she's got a bit of a halo. So I'm just darkening little patches here in the crowd. Okay, that feel that makes me feel better. Now I can move on. <laughs> so uh, let's let's now dive into the main part of the figure, which is actually going to go a lot faster than than you may expect at this point. So, a few things I want to do, I think, right now. Um, I think I want to start with the skin tone, and let's paint her, her arms and legs and face in. So I'm going to take some... Where did we do this before? We did it right here. Some warm yellow. A little bit of warm red. Let's get a bit more of it here. And just a tiny bit of warm blue. And then let's... of a darker skin tone at least in the kind of playing soccer all day in the sun oops you can't see what I'm doing here can you basically I'm just making a brown adding a little bit of, of white in here Maybe that 
needs to be even more brown. Good about that right now. We'll, we'll just we're gonna move on. Let's do the other arm. I'm just I'm looking for mostly the shadow at this point. still nope so I'm just going to take some um, just want to thin that arm out a little bit right there Okay, I'm just gonna keep on going. Let's do, let's go actually go back to her face a little bit here. And I, again, I would feel pretty confident going right into these details, but I think some people would freak out. So I'm gonna just gonna go back. This is basically the same color we had in the background. And I'm just going to paint in these facial features here, just very generally. Pretty small details, but uh, I 
then I'm even gonna go under her her chin here and the right side of her face. It's going to be very hard for us to get a likeness, just considering how small of a area we're, we're working in here. All right, like this is the size of my pinky finger, All right? So don't worry about like making it look exactly like her. That's not really the point of today's exercise. Um, Maybe while I'm here, I shall do the hair separately. So that's, you know, I'm happy with that. Let's take, uh, actually, let's keep on, I'm going to let that dry on her face. And we'll go down to her legs here. So this leg is mostly in shadow, right? We'll put a highlight back on there and we'll even we'll darken that leg as well. So we'll do we're doing one little thing at a time. We'll go back to her face. I'm gonna blow dry that just to speed this process up. Good. You're just getting hot in here. ice pack on the camera and it's still conked out that's uh it caused her some anxiety here so her basically most of her face is bathed in shadow here I'm going to leave a little bit of light on either side there on her ear. We'll get more into those fine-tuning details shortly. So let's just keep on going here. Let's go back to this other arm.
So I just added a bit more blue and red into this color. Actually, it's probably, well, we'll see how dark it is. I think it's gonna be really dark. But... Okay, let's go to the other arm. And you can see I'm putting, oops. The majority of that shadow, oops again. In kind of the middle of this part, we've got some reflected light from her body coming back up onto her arm here that we don't have on the other arm so much. I'm gonna come back to this other arm here. Let's see. I guess there is some reflected light there, but we'll get that as we go. been a bit too strong on those shadows, but uh, it tends to happen when I'm starting to pick up speed here. I can tone all that stuff down later on. I 
really should be doing this as like a final glaze at the end. I don't know why I'm spending so much time at this doing this, but I think the grass threw me off a little bit. Okay, so let's and then let's go to the face. Right, and maybe we'll also just take a second here. We can just darken her hair with this same darker color. We might come back in here with some black later on. I'm going to mix her skin tone again a little bit separately. I was taking warm yellow, warm red, and warm blue together, as usual for skin tone. I'm just going to take that warmth it's a little bit cold that
I can't see what I'm doing, obviously. So I'm just building back up this foundational layer of uh, skin tone in here, which I I went too dark in a few different places. So to go back and These legs, I think, are a little bit too dark. So my overhead camera is uh, overheating, even though there's an ice pack on it, which is very frustrating. I'll let it uh, cool down for, Goodness, <laughs> these ice packs have completely melted. No wonder it's not having an effect. Okay, I'm gonna run and get another ice pack <laughs> uh, because this is not uh... okay. So give me one second here. Wow, I didn't I didn't realize it was that hot in here. I guess I've just been so focused on making working on these paintings or this painting. Which is good, you know, sometimes you lose a little bit of track of what's going on. I'll be, give me one second.
can't believe how. I didn't expect that. When I'm painting in the winter, I don't never have to deal with this problem. So, you know, I'll, I'll honestly, I'm a little bit discouraged with this painting. This painting is, is there's a, a number of things that have thrown me through a loop <laughs> while we've been paint working on it. Um, the grass really surprised me. I didn't, it's, I know it looks so straightforward. It's one of those things that I, it, uh, um, did not expect it to, to, to cause me some fits and it still doesn't look that great if I was to start this painting again I, I would have probably done a few things a little bit differently but uh, it is what it is so let's just keep on and you know I'm, I'm kind of these the skin textures has been a bunch I think I want to do this as glazing rather than trying to mix those colors which I normally do anyway and yet, for some reason, I had the idea that I would, uh, I don't know, take a totally different approach today. So, let's move into the into the jersey. I'm just going to take a little bit of paint and I'm going to go over here, add some white. over the jersey so they don't have to fight with the the colors that were there because I got some of that green all over the, the pants all right it's like we'll just touch things up um, that'll be a highlight. Okay. I'll let that, while that's drying, we can move on. Let's uh, let's do these shoes. The bottom of the shoes. It's got a bit of like a this dark color. I'm gonna take my cold blue. Do I have any of that? Or actually, let's let's take some warm blue since it's we've got lots of that left. Um, so it's like my dark color with some warm blue and a bit of white. And... Obviously I'm not gonna get into all that detail on the bottom of these shoes, but... So yeah, like I was saying, it is a, it's discouraging when the painting doesn't go the way you want it to go. 
And I would say 90% of the time, paintings don't go the way that I want them to go. A big part of being an artist is is being able to kind of go with the flow and not get too worked up when things take you go a little bit sideways which honestly you know is 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 something an inspiration I take from sports and you know an, an athlete like this like Christine Sinclair is is the greatest female ho soccer player in history like there's there's a few other players that have come kind of close a couple of American players but for the most part she's in a class of her of her own right and yet the team that she plays on hasn't always been super successful they've had some struggles and um, it's got to be really tough to be like one of the, the greatest athletes of all time and yet you play a team sport and uh, you can't do it all by yourself you have to depend on other people and um, she she has had at different times great supporting casts um, but I, you know the big part of being an athlete and I think an artist is dealing with disappointment and being able to continue like can you imagine playing a game where you know a two or three minutes into the game it's clear you know that somebody they score two or three goals real quick goals and you're already essentially losing the game and the game is just begun and your options are to just fold and just say well okay well, I guess it's let's just walk away or to try to mount a comeback and um, so I think what's what I admire about athletes is when they don't give up and they manage to kind of pull themselves out of uh, these like dark dark holes and sometimes come back and, and win which are really that's got to be those are like the most satisfying victories of all right when you're when you're just everyone counts you out and you and you come from behind surprise everyone people have already left the game because like ah well that one's over Like, I remember those, like, when I was a kid, I used to go to hockey games with my dad. And, you know, he had to work the next day, and I had school the next day. <laughs> Sometimes during, you know, when it was during the week. And there'd be times where, you know, the game is, it's, let's say, 4 to 1 or something, and there's 10 minutes left, and my dad would just turn to me like, well... Do you mind if we go now, or... And... Like, no, I guess. Let's go home. I guess it's over. And then... <laughs> that's where... You know, we, we walk, we're walking to the car, and then you hear the crowd... You know... Yelling and screaming, and now it's four to two. And you're like, wow, that's awesome. Like, it's kind of a bummer we missed that uh, goal, but... You know... I, likelihood that this team is going to come back and score and then you get into the car and oh they score again it's 4-3 and then and we're like oh no I guess it's kind of a bummer and then but you know there's 30 seconds left in the game clearly it's over and then they come back and they tie it and then you're already now on the highway driving home and of course, my dad would feel really bad. <laughs> it didn't happen very often, but... You know... Um, it's just those are the kind of things that... That... As disappointing as it is, it's also really exciting, because it's like, yeah, you know what? 
these these people are not going to give up and it gives me faith that you know like if when faced with adversity i'm going to power through and try to make it work and also you know when things aren't going well in a painting rather than just keep on trying to make some part of it work I just go, okay, well, you know what? I'm just going to take a break from that. It's not going to get any better at the moment. I need to either do something else, like literally, you know, I don't know, go have some food, go for a walk, make a different painting, have a shower, whatever it is, and then and try it again later. Or in this case, like, let's just... Let's do something else that we can do. Let's let's do these shoes, because we're going to need to do these shoes at some point. So really I'm just using a bunch of just messy colors left over here on my palette as I often do towards the end of a painting. Just try to make use of everything that's left over here. I'll put some highlights on that later on, but just keep on going. So I asked way earlier at the beginning of the chat if anyone had ever been to uh, an Olympic event, or um, and I have lots of stories I can share about that, um, because I've had the opportunity to go to two Olympics. When I was a kid growing up in Calgary, I got to, uh, I was... Eight, 10 years old when the 88 Olympics were there and I was really very young so I don't my recollections of the sports and all that kind of stuff but you know I think my dad and I we went to a couple of like hockey games the obviously the Canada I think the Olympics have also changed a lot I think a lot of people don't really remember that but back in the 80s it was all amateur athletes and, and many of the sports are amateur still uh, amateur but the uh, hockey now has or maybe will have professional athletes in it again um, but it, but anyway we went and saw like Latvia versus Eastern Germany or something because again this is was there Eastern Germany? Berlin Wall is 89, right? So it probably fell right... Berlin Wall right after that. So we would have seen, yeah, Eastern Germany. Um, and most of the... Like, the Canadian team... Like, those tickets would have been very expensive. Um, so here, I'm sorry, I'm just painting. Remember I painted all this white earlier.
So I don't remember um, the Calgary Olympics too much. I do remember it being kind of a cool atmosphere to be around as a kid. And um, people were pretty excited in Calgary at the time. And then years later, when I moved from Los Angeles to Vancouver, I came here right before the 2010 Olympics. And got to experience that firsthand. And um, that was really cool. I had, a, most, most of my friends are artists and musicians. A lot of the artists I, I know left the city. They're all, they were just disgusted. Uh, there was a lot of controversy around in Vancouver with the people, the, the local people. As there often is almost every Olympics, isn't there? Where people are upset with how much money it costs. And there was all these promises that they were going to build um, housing for the poor. Which, of course, never happened. I'm sure that's the first time at the Olympics that they've been less, where people have made promises before the games that haven't actually ever came to light. Uh, but anyway, it was really neat. Like, I, I volunteered at the Ukraine house. Like, every um, country and kind of the community of the local community. That, um, have like a house where athletes and media and family can go and and celebrate, watch the games, etc. So I volunteered as a bartender at Ukraine House, and that was like really cool. Like it was kind of pretty funny. <laughs> Ukrainians, as a lot of Eastern Europeans, are big drinkers, and like I think it was like the night. There was a, some a bunch of Ukrainians were competing the next day, and everyone was drinking a lot. And you're thinking, there's going to be some hungover athletes. It's going to be, uh, I hope they're going to be able to make it to their venues by tomorrow morning. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. Okay, see the, <laughs> these shoes coming into focus? I feel better about that. I feel like I probably should have just left the arms and legs but instead of painting kind of them out a bit, but hey, that happens. Um, so I think I'm going to go back into these legs. Uh, work on that for a second. Um, I think I'm just going to paint it mostly just like a skin tone. And then I'll glaze some darker shadows over top of it. So basically I'm just going to paint... these this out and then as I although well let's see I should see. I feel like that's much better let's do these on the arms too.
Uh, okay. So I kept kind of that hand. I like that. Both of the hands, I think, are kind of going to be fine for right now. Um, so let's go back to the jersey. I think this is dry. And we're going to do maybe a little bit of red, darker red in there. So we're going to take our warm red. Take a bit of the warm blue, and that gives me just a little bit of a darker red. And then I'm going to paint, put a bit of white paint under here to, to widen the sleeve. Some darkening. This is so. This is just the warm red and just a tiny bit of warm blue in here. And I'm putting in the, the these sort of just large areas of shadow. Oh, that's too way too dark. Um, which I'll then go and and refine with uh, a glaze here shortly. Now her shorts sort of have a lot more wrinkles in there. I'm gonna simplify. I'm simplifying it just a little bit. Sometimes if you do it exactly the way it looks, it can kind of look a little weird. So. so I think if I painted that exactly like that, I. Think think it would be strange so just the way that fabric is sort of buckling in the middle there
Okay, I'm going to get a bit of the... These shin pads can be pretty big, right? Let's get inside the shorts here. Thought that was going to be dark enough, but I guess not. Again, just adding warm blue to the warm red. Nothing else to get that darker color. So I am I was gonna do all of this with glaze, but I kinda like the way it's turning out, so
Okay, let's get the number on her jersey now. I'm getting a bit of pink on there. I don't want it to be totally bright, bright white. So... Do the same over here. So I'm just giving her a bit, a slight um, bit more of a chest here than she has in the photograph, um, just so that she still looks it's a bit of a, a feminine side there, because her face has gotten kind of masculine the way that I've painted it, so I want to make sure that that's there. Um, and then I'll go... Okay, so let's zoom back out. Okay, 
so I'm getting getting closer. Maybe it doesn't quite seem like that. <laughs> Definitely taken me longer than I expected to get to this point. Um, but uh, I'm going to glaze a little bit on here and also get some details in and fine tune with the brush as we go. Um, but I also want to darken these thighs and uh, give a little definition to the knee, etc. We haven't touched this ball in a while, so I think it might be a good idea to come back and take care of that. So the last time we were painting this ball, or you know, it was before we even did more work on the background. So there's a little bit of this green that's overlapping it, so get that ball shape back in here. And how should we paint that soccer ball? Part of me wonders if I should just do a quick um, oh, interesting. Okay, so here's uh, what the ball looks like at this particular games. Hmm. That's a pretty complex pattern for even me to paint on here. So let's uh, I think why don't we just stick with <laughs> your generic soccer ball which we have down here. Um in fact, let's zoom in. And so I think I'm going to I'm going to paint let's see. I'm going to use some of this dark color that we have again. Remember, I haven't used any black in here at all. I might do a little bit of black towards the very end. Just put a little bit of glazing fluid in there, mostly just to... This paint is starting to dry up. We've been painting for a while, so... Let's see, where should the black be on here? If we put if we put it right there on the top, it's gonna to seem pretty outrageous, won't it? Because then but then we have this black shape, we'd only have that. We'd have this. Hmm. No, kind of a bit. Uh, how did I draw on the outline? Okay, let's just do this. In 
fact, let's let's actually go back to my elf. That would mean <laughs> go back to here, paint one quadrant, it skips, and so this is this the yeah, this is the black. And again, you know, I'm painting this um, a little bit lighter. Always darken everything. And probably these squares or, or hexagons should have been smaller, but. Could have even just kept it white. Hmm. Do I do I want to get rid of all that? Maybe it's the grass that needs to encroach a little bit on there. So, you know, that that was kind of frustrating to, to but, you know, that's it, one of the things. It, it's never too late to make a change, right? Even when, so sometimes it feels like, oh, I got to see this through. No, you can always say, you know what, no, no, I'm going to stop. I'm going to erase it. And... So I'll put a, uh, 
I'll glaze some shadows on here eventually. That ball looks so big though. <clears throat> Okay, got a bunch of brushes to clean. Going to do um, the color on her legs one last time. We'll do a little glaze over there. Gives a bit of um, kind of warmth back into her arms. That's better. Okay, and then like. paint her face here and then we'll do a final glaze and I think we'll be we'll be done um, okay so let's zoom all the way in there
Let's go smaller brush now. Need a bit more warm red here. Got some white and warm red on my brush here. Let's get this. Put a bit more of this white on the numbers. Actually, that one I can keep down on her pants and keep that. That Canada logo is ch a challenge. That is, um, let me see, should I go for it? I'm already so over longer than I was hoping, but, uh, roll up the sleeve here.
So I'm using like just some white and I put a little bit of glazing fluid in there because it just makes it maybe a little bit easier to paint with. Okay, and let's build out this uh, maple leaf thing here. So right now it's definitely very bright on her outfit. We'll glaze over it and darken it. Now, yeah, let's let that dry. While that's dry, I don't think I'm gonna dare, well, maybe I'll try putting a little bit of letters on here. Um. Maybe I'll do that with black when we get the black out for her hair. So we'll leave that for now. Okay. So what else? I just want to touch up a few areas here. This area, I don't know what happened, there's a little smudge, so I'm just incorporating it in here, just turning it into a wrinkle. I could get some green and try to paint that out, but maybe it was the universe telling me I needed to draw the other side of the fabric on here. It is kind of fun to think like, you know, when you're making a painting and sometimes it's not going the way that you want, is just imagine that like the painting is trying to tell you something, that it wants something. And when you fight it, just, just like stop and go like, okay, what is it I'm supposed to be learning here? What is it trying to tell me that I'm not picking up on? It sounds silly. But I, I'll be on, like, there's, if I think that way about things and sort of talk to the painting almost like a person, sometimes I'm, like, kind of surprised by what I can learn from, from the painting itself. Okay. Oops, I didn't realize I was so zoomed in.
Because this, this painting is has given me some problems. <laughs> Very unexpected problems. The grass was way more difficult than I thought. I thought that was going to take me 20 minutes and I'd be just done the whole background. I ended up spending like an hour or more on that. It's just uh, sometimes it's the thing. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's, I was going to mix a dark color. It's We're so far in. <laughs> Let's save a little bit of time. We're going to use some black. Uh, and I probably didn't need it. I just need a little bit of black. Because um, what I want to do, I'm going to do a little bit of glazing with some black. So I'm going to take um, my red and my blue. Oh, just, okay, that's why I was, I was like, why is it not going purple? It's because I used warm red. Hmm. I think I want to get a little bit more of a purpley, dark color. So we'll do that again. It's like some cold uh, red. Warm blue, there we go. Mix this together. We're going to get a purple. And I like to use, like if I'm going to make a dark color, I really like purple as a dark color. As opposed to just like a, like it, because often we see purples in shadows. So let's take a bit of this, see how fast that goes. Okay, let's dab off some of that. Okay, and we're going to glaze with it. Okay. What should we do first here? darken that whole part of her shirt down, come right up underneath her chin. It's, I love that how I can just do that with the glaze is really quickly darken that area over so rather than trying to mix that perfect color for the the um, the logo. Slowly just continuing down her torso here. There's this shadow that kind of comes across her body.
Should we do these legs? Let me think about that. I'll wait for things to dry. That way, if I want to wipe stuff away, I'll, I'll, I won't mess anything else up. So let's keep on going. Let's go down this other leg. Okay, let's do the soccer ball. Actually, well, maybe even before we do the soccer ball, let's do the sh some of the shadow. And I'll zoom out for that, because it's also helpful for me to see it a little bit further out. Sometimes if you're just, your nose is deep into it, you, it can be a little tricky to see some of this stuff. Too dark. It should be getting lighter as it moves over this way, gets further away from her. But maybe that means we also need just to darken. And then we can obviously, we can add little bits of shadows elsewhere. I think we'll make little, little clumpy kind of things elsewhere here. I'll wait for that to dry. Because if I make any mistakes, then it's going to be... So, like, as I do this sort of thing, like, if I'm glazing... Glazing is great, for, but if you start making mistakes, it can drive you absolutely bonkers when you're trying to clean it up. So, what I like to do is do little areas, let it dry, and then if I need to go in and touch it up, I'll go in and touch it up after. But... Uh, So let's, I'm going to go do a little work on the face again here. I think ideally we'll, we're going to finish this up, her face and her hair. Um, you know what, I'm going to blow dry this because I want to put the rest of my hand on this. Oh.
Okay. So let's do the face. So let's start with eyebrows. Ugh, it's a little bit clumpy, that paint there. Oh, that's great. I kind of recovered well from some little things that were going on there. Now, some hair in here.
Let's get a little bit of her, that hair. It's in the light. I want to keep that pretty subtle, just a little hint. I don't want to do too much more there. Do I want to do this in Canada? Let's think about Canada. We have one, two, three, four, five, six letters. So. Okay, let's just see what how we're doing here. Uh, zoom out. <laughs> um, getting getting close. I think I might put a little some a few black lines in a few very small places just to kind of. Maybe not even black, like I'll take some black and red. Make a really, like usually I just use blue for this, but. And I would never do any of this anywhere but in the foreground, right? In the, in the shapes closest to the viewer, right? You don't want to be putting any black in the background here or on the rings or anything. Otherwise, it's just going to look too. Um, it's going to compete with the shapes that are in the front here. <laughs> that that uh, pair of uh, pants just keeps getting wider and billowing out there, doesn't it? I'm not sure. It's pretty dangerous if I start trying to minimize it with some uh, uh, green, so I'm just going to have to live with it. So let's zoom back in. Yikes. Ice pack just fell from the heavens. Um, pretty good catch, if I don't say so myself. If I do say so myself. So that's, I'm definitely making that darker than it was originally, but... I think as I've said many times in the past, like sometimes, like if you just try to, if you paint exactly what's in the photograph, it's not believable. 
as a painting. It, it can kind of look weird and awkward and... Um, okay, other leg, to do too much that I feel like that's pretty good okay um, what else little details let's go into the hands I don't like the the Olympic rings being so um, they should be way more out of focus like that and there's a way to do that but uh, some of the, those little time-consuming things here. Pretty subtle. Let's go to the other hand, which I think might be done, but
like that. That's good. Okay. A little bit on the weirdish reddish side, but does it kind of works weirdly enough? Same thing with that inner thigh being a little. It's I don't know if it's coming up on camera, but I kind of that's weird. So again, a weird, unexpected thing. Now I think let's uh, do the soccer ball. This is so. What color should the soccer ball be? Well, if it is totally white, then it's going to be picking up some red from her clothing and green from the grass and maybe even some blue from the sky so this is a this is a lesson for for another day um so i'm not i'm just going to probably just paint it but i'll kind of talk through my thought process as i'm doing it um let's take some what was the color we used for the grass primarily was some oh shit, it was warm yellow wasn't it warm yellow let's mix it over here warm yellow cool blue do we have cool blue left ah gotta squeeze a tiny bit of cool blue on here Just a bit of white. Okay, so that I got it, a color I like. Let's put a bit of glazing fluid. Oh, there's some on the on here already. So here's the color, very subtle. And a little bit of this green on. And you notice, like, as I'm doing this, I'm kind of going around the shape trying to give it that the roundness of the form I'm not going left and right I'm just going all the way around um, let's even do a very very super subtle version of that with uh, some red where am I Right up here. Okay, let's get just a bit of reflection off of her body on there. Yeah, it looks like there's already looks got a bit of a bluish hue anyway. And then we'll put a bit of that purple shadowy glaze here. So let's uh, take a bit of purple. I knew I was going to say I should have blow dried this because I'm taking a bit of that green off. So let me do just that. I just want to be done, and then you just like it doesn't end.
Just giving a couple little, you know, soccer ball is going to get dirty, right? Putting some little scuff marks on there. Or just where her foot is that's going to be the darkest darkest part of any shadow where the object is in contact with the ground okay <laughs> uh How does that look on camera? <laughs> uh, at least I'm staying out of trouble here, right? This is Friday night. Okay. I think I think I'm gonna be happy with that. Um There's just something there on the canvas. Okay. I think I think I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, there's definitely I can see little things that I want to just continue to tweak on. Um, but don't imagine it getting measurably better <laughs> in the next uh, uh, half hour. Some of this is stuff that would take me a little bit longer. But I'm happy with that. Like, again, it's not exactly the way that I wanted it to turn out. But it's, I'm sure, much better than the vast majority of people um, think that they could do themselves, right? And I always have to remember that, right? That my expectations for myself are much big. This is not after anyway. This is um, I'm so used to writing that, Christine. Sinclair. Is it the... What do you call it? The... Yeah, Christine Sinclair, 2020 Olympics, Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it again. If I just look at it and and embrace it on on its own merits, I, I get more and more and more happy. When I start comparing it to the photograph, that's you know, compare and despair, as they say, right? Uh, I see in the chat there, Heidi chimes in. Hi, Michael, Paula, and Maria. Hi, everyone. A long painting night, but it looks good, Michael. Sorry for retracting twice. I was not wearing the right glasses. And Paula is still there. Says, hi, Heidi. I'd like to, I'd like to see your painting. And Heidi says, definitely need to speed up and keep up. Good night, Michael, and everyone. Have a nice weekend. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I say this all the time, but especially when I'm working from a photograph, I'm digesting that image for the first time. 
if I was, I could do, I could do this painting probably in in half the amount of time if I was to start it over right now and have this painting side by side. And I, I feel bad for everyone who's painting along with me and saw me fumble around and trying different things in the background. But eventually, I got to a place that I'm happy with. So just the the quick lesson with all of that is that it's, you know, as I say. I I'm, I'm don't edit any of this. You see the, the raw video. You can... I mean, it's... Who would... I mean... But the idea is that you can see how, like, I have to make some changes, and I'm trying to figure out how the best way to do this. I'm not mixing the right colors. And you just keep on moving forward. And if you get stuck on something, don't give up on the whole painting. Just move to a different part of the painting. I go, you know, when I was getting really frustrated, just work down here in the shoes for a little while, right? You could see, you saw I painted out the arms and legs uh, at least once. Um, there was a lot of changes that were made throughout here, but ultimately, at the end, at least on on camera, I think it looks looks quite good. Um, I do. I, I was gonna just go, but I'm now looking at this. And there's a weird thing happening with her shorts that I'm just going to quickly fix. I always like, yeah. But, you know, again, these are the things that drive me crazy later on. So, the, my confu the thing is, is that we've, it's an interesting thing. We've got this shadow coming down right between her legs here. And I want to make it clear what is happening here with the the fabric of the shorts I don't know if I that was a good I think that's okay some weird stuff going on down here the way that I've painted. I see kind of what's happening here. I think that's better. Anyway, I've got to walk away. Thank you, everyone, for spending the evening with me. In a couple of days, we're going to be painting an Attila Richard Lukacs painting for the... Actually, let's just we'll do one. I like to kind of see them finally side by side. Together like that. Okay. <laughs> and now i got to walk away. So on Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock... We're going to be painting a Richard Lukacs painting. Attila Richard Lukacs is one of the most famous Vancouver-based artists, and we're painting him in celebration of Vancouver Pride. So um, if you want to get your pride on with me, you're certainly welcome to do that on Sunday. And then I'm so excited because Sunday evening I'm getting my second vaccine shot, so I'm super excited to... Um, to have that. My wife got hers earlier this week, so finally... Um, we'll be uh, more vaccinated in this house so anyway we'll see you guys in a couple of days enjoy your weekend until then thanks for painting with me thanks for spending your friday night 
uh, making art. There's a lot of other things you could have been doing, so I'm very grateful for that. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to leave a donation, there's links in the description below. Otherwise, we will see everyone in uh, 48 hours? <laughs> the last 36? I don't know. My brain is dead. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you very soon. Take care. Good night.